Call it Paul Bubba Sparks. Booty, yeah, booty, booty, rock it, nigga, well. Booty, 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 rock it, nigga, well. Booty, 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 rock it, nigga. Some people have good veins where you could easily locate it like that, and I love those type of people. And you have people who have veins like me where it's really skinny. Like, you could tell that I'm gonna need a tourniquet when trying to get this. Well, everybody needs a tourniquet when trying to get their blood drunk. YouTube is Desi and I'm back with another video y'all so in this video I'm going to talk about the top five questions that you get asked as far as for becoming a phlebotomist again I have had my experience with phlebotomy when I worked at a plasma center now this is not your usual vlog setting you guys I usually be in the room with the ring light but however um I'm nine to six today and I'm unsure if I'm a vlog then I'm trying to keep this consistency going on so you know let me go ahead and vlog in here but um yeah so they give you a lot of questions that they ask you when you first want to become a phlebotomist at a plasma center but again i started off as a donor tech but they will start talking to you as far as for questions with phlebotomy if you had your experience and whatnot um i had my certification when i first um started that job so i actually wanted to start off as a phlebotomist but you have to work your way up as a phlebotomist there so which is nothing wrong with that so i'm gonna go ahead and talk about the top five questions that they mainly ask you guys and to prepare for a phlebotomy job interview you want to research the company you want to always tell them things that you know about the company that's type of stuff was type of um those type of things will stand out as you're doing your interview um this gives you the insight and in, and the skills as far as for the type of employee that you're looking to get hired on and um also you want to write down key points to uh common interview questioning so sometimes when i before i got hired on that about um bpl i looked up the company reviews and i also looked up um certain type of questions that they may ask me so i could be prepared to um listen to however it was a bad location so i was so ready to get hired on which is an experience that i won't say that i for, uh, regret regret but however it's the fact that um you know you want to come prepared another thing is to make sure you have like a binder or something like that that has your resume or anything in there um i usually have my por professional portfolio folder um that i bring with me uh, whenever i go on an interview now i don't have it on me right now but it's usually like a binder you want to have a binder or a folder that has all your accomplishments in there whether it has your high school diploma in there your id just in case they need a copy of that your resume those type of things just make sure you're prepared so one of the questions they are, are going to ask you is why do you want to become a phlebotomist? So whenever they hit you with why you want to come up a phlebotomist question, this is the type of question that allows you to have a personal response. So usually if somebody was to ask me why I want to become a phlebotomist, I would say something like, well, one, I would like to um, enjoy the experience. One thing about me, you know, I always want to, you know, be able to know almost every single thing as far as for a work setting. I want to be able to be versatile with what I do. And on top of that, I feel like phlebotomy may be a good experience. Um, I'm just willing to try it. I can't really say I don't like it because some people be like, oh, no, I don't want to become a phlebotomist. I don't want to stick. I don't like blood. I don't like dealing with people like stuff like that. But you never know unless you try. Well, interviewers remember candidates that talk that tells a story or talk about the gratification of phlebotomy career. So usually when you try to if you can't really relate it to you personally try to tell a story to try to talk about it that's the easier way to kind of um, answer the question another question they're going to ask you is how can you handle um a, a, a angry patient so most of the time when people ask me this type of question i'll refer it back to anything it don't have to be any experience as far as for medical it can even be about you working at mcdonald's chick-fil-a anything like that just try to refer and let them know how are you willing to work with a, a patient that's going to be hard working with you so you want to write down a couple of tips to use in your phlebotomy interview. You want to kind of include a story on how you basically help the patient become calm. Something I can say is, um, well, when working with an angry patient, sometimes I usually like to try to continue to see what I could do best for the patient first. And if I see that I'm no longer getting anywhere or getting anywhere as far as for helping the patient out, I'll, I'll just move over to management so it can kind of save me from getting in trouble and also just kind of help the patient kind of have a better um, understanding on how to help out with the situation. The third question, this is the main one. They're going to say, what 
are you what are you going to do if you're unable to find the vein so whenever you get this question um, this question is asking basically how many attempts would you do before getting a substance the key to phlebotomy uh, question is to know the company's policy so the average for most fast uh, facilities is two attempts and that's usually true even with my externship when I uh, was working OBGYN with um, medical assistant we had a lot of phlebotomy we were doing there we were drawing like six tubes a day from some of the patients but however what I usually do is I'll try two times and I don't like to try two times half of the time but I like to get it on the first try like I like to make sure I feel that vein like when I tell you that but a lot of my patients they have like veins where they easily pop out mines are just capillary veins where they're really so small so you have to use a butterfly needle but yeah you want to try two times now if you see it as if like the patient already looks like they're scared of you and they don't want you sticking them or whatnot I'll try to talk to them you know try to see what I can do to try to get their mind off of the stick half of the time um some people may have you kind of like turn your head or don't look that's what I usually do when I get my blood drawn but some people do like to look to make sure it's getting done properly but um with me as a cancer I can kind of feel the vibe like whenever I go into a lab or something like that and I got to get my blood drawn I can kind of tell like if somebody's been there for a long time and they know what they're doing and you can kind of tell the people that's been like training that's training right now but um yeah you want to try two attempts whenever trying to get the blood drawn it makes the patient so mad when you're doing so many attempts like I don't see how people could do it and I'll literally tell the person before I sit in the chair are you going to sit me one time that's usually what I usually do so you want to make sure that with that type of answer you'll try two attempts to try to get the vein if you cannot get the vein go to the person that you know for a fact that can get that vein um, because like I say some patients get really upset and it's like it, it, it kind of throws you off because it's like it kind of distracts you from the real person of what you're trying to do all right the next one is going to say is um tell me about your experience as far as for drawing blood this can be another question where you tell your experience or you can also tell a story or anything like that i'll always talk about either my OBGYN experience or like i said like i'm telling you guys now my phlebotomy experience at bpl um and also you could even if you even if you don't have any experience as far as for phlebotomy talk about your experience for phlebotomy during your medical assistant schooling now if some people either go to school for um, medical assistant or if you go to school as far as for phlebotomy you will get the chance to draw blood like what we did at medical assistant schooling for us we would actually grab some of the patients that's either in different um programs so if you're in medical billing and coding if you're in um nursing or anything like that we will grab you or dental assistant and we'll bring you to the um thing and we'll have a log that you have to sign or anything like that we'll have a log that you sign and you'll be one of the person that is one of our sticks because one of the requirements for medical assistant schooling you have to have a certain amount of sticks um so yeah keep that in mind it's not really that hard of a question you just talk about your experience that's all i do all right and the last question um that they that they will ask you is often one phlebotomy interview question is, is about your knowledge order draw medical uh equipment or blood draw procedure refresh yourself on these subjects and here's some tips on to remember on how to um draw blood so uh, the last question they usually like to ask you is um they'll throw a question at you where they'll talk about phlebotomy like they'll say what tube is used for glucose and in your mind you should know that's the gray tube um but however you know whenever you're doing your interview for phlebotomy always go over basic knowledge stuff what type of um um equipment do you use with phlebotomy a tourniquet gauze cotton ball band-aid needle you know those type of things you want to know those type of things are what you use because you never know what type of question they're going to throw at you on the last question they may say so what is the order of draw when you're trying to get a cbc done um ptt done those type of things like so you want to make sure that you have those type of knowledge ready for you now if you feel like you're stuck at any of your questions with phlebotomy at your interview say for instance if they ask you a certain question you're like ma'am honestly i don't know or anything like that if you say anything like that I don't think that's going to stop you from getting a job but just after saying you don't know as far as for that question follow with but if you let me know I know for a fact I'll know for now you know as far as for writing that down or anything like that because some people don't really know the order of draw and I will be doing a video as far as for that as well too but you just want to try to keep those type of um questions and answers involved in your um in your mind when you get a chance but in the meantime I'm hoping everybody have a good one don't forget to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to make sure you guys have a good Wednesday you guys stay safe during this coronavirus because it's really getting serious like these kids are really going back to school already here in florida and they're already positive for the coronavirus so i'm hoping everybody stays safe make sure you guys are always safe and bye y'all